Welcome to Higher Caliber, where each week we dive into the backstory and history of the people and companies that keep America running. We're going to be talking today to Donnie Clark of the Clark family. For those of you that don't know, I'll give a quick description. Uh, Donnie is well-known in the community, well-liked by everyone in the community. Um, great business, kind of epitomizes what we started this podcast about, was getting to know the people in the community that kind of help keep the community running with their business. They have ties to the community. They're, I guess a great word would be almost entangled within the community. Yep. Um, take over a large portion of the downtown section with their different buildings, with the business. Um, I guess the biggest thing too is when you're when you're around town when you come in. I mean, it's it's like walking into your buddy's house, getting to talk to everybody. So today, like I said, we're going to be here talking to Donnie Clark, um, business owner, farmer, son, father, husband. Uh, I've been called a couple other things in there that's too. True. That we <laughs> but we we prefer to keep it family friendly. Yes. Um, I was I was going to go for you know you know ginger beard aficionado but i mean <laughs> if right. you want to go something so i i guess we'll, we'll start off donnie just kind of tell everybody a little bit about yourself a little bit about the business and then we'll kind of kind of take a little bit deeper dive into what's keeping you guys going in the community sure guys and i i appreciate the time this morning and inviting me onto your show to talk i really like we as a community really like the type of things that gentlemen such as yourselves people tied into local economies are doing to try and uh Try and keep us uh, on point, uh, subjectively here, right? You know, try and try and remind us all uh, that there's more to life than than just the news you see at six o'clock on your local television station. So thank you guys. Yeah, uh, Donnie Clark. I I was born in Belleville. I grew up here and graduated from Clear Fork in 1994, where you do all the quintessential Clear Forking things, played football and, and did all that. Uh, had an active childhood here and did go away to college in Athens. From there, my journey took me to several bigger cities. I lived for a while and you know and worked in Columbus, Cleveland, Detroit. Traveled the country um, quite a bit for my duties with the AMA Superbike Series as the public relations and media relations manager. Did the same thing in a similar capacity with IndyCar. And uh, my journey though brought me back here. And this is, uh, this is what we're going to talk about today. I, I was convinced, I maybe was convinced by people coming out of college that anymore, and this was, you know, this was the late 90s when I got out of college, if you were to call yourself successful, it's because you would have gone to a big city and made yourself as such. At some point in the mid-2000s, it hit me, that's simply not true. I knew it to not be true growing up here. But it was really driven home the point to me when I realized that the things that can be accomplished at what some would call a rural level, some would call a more, uh, at least less populated level, are the exact same things that can be accomplished should you be living in downtown Columbus or Cleveland or L.A. or New York. Uh, geographically, one does not need to constrain uh, him or herself. Yeah, go for it is is what I always say. We, we, the Clark family, myself, my wife, my kids, my father, my mom, everybody involved, we try to create platforms. I, I am less interested in creating a retail space than I am creating a platform off which I can launch into other opportunities, endeavors, uh, benefits for the community, benefits for myself. You know, we're in business, but that's, that's what we're trying to do. So we, it's, our approach has always been from the top down in as much as let's create these platforms. Let's create a good platform built on quality and trust and, and then go from there. And that's, that's what we've done so far. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess where I'm coming from too, what I, what I want to kind of dive into is, you know, you had the education, you obviously had, you know, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say working for corporations like AMA and, you know, you said IndyCar, mm -hmm. um, pay was good. Pay was good. Um, what was it specifically in the early 2000s that made you kind of switch gears and go from being corporate America, and I'm guessing quite a bit of traveling, to 
back back to your hometown, back to Little Belleville in you know Midwest Ohio. Yeah. What what led you to make that that type of a, a switch? Yeah, that's a great question. I I went to college for journalism. I graduated. Uh, I graduated summa cum laude from EW Script School of Journalism at Ohio University. And I came out in that profession at rare and to go. And I, I had success. I, I was accomplished in that profession. Uh, when I had the opportunity to meet my wife, Jamie, she is an attorney by trade. Uh, she's passed the bar in both Ohio and West Virginia. She's, she's an, uh, an amazing professional. But we both realized in living in our first house that we owned in Parkersburg, West Virginia, and getting uh pregnant with with our first and then trying to decide how we were going to set up that next phase of our life it started occurring to to me at least uh that i missed bleeding and sweating and getting dirt on me and i missed uh breaking my back i missed getting bruises i i missed the the kind of appreciation you can get for a job only after you've put in so much sweat equity into that mm-hmm. job that you then have something tangible to show for it. I, it's when I realized that and was given an opportunity by my father to move back to the home farm so we can ratchet up farming operations and with a couple other ideas in mind. That's, that's when I said, all, all right, this, is, this would be a great way to raise family, which ultimately we did with two children. This would be a great way to, uh, to establish something whatever it was at the time we didn't know what that vision ultimately would become it would become lz milling and trade and a couple other visions but it was that that blank slate on which to write our own story that's that's what we wanted to do we were less interested in in moving someone else's needle Mm -hmm. than we were moving our own needle and that's exactly what we did we came here specifically to to assume ownership of of our life of our opportunities and and our our efforts and see what we could do with it so far so good yeah and and i think the community at large is benefiting from that viewpoint from that i guess vision is kind of the cheesy word to use but it is from that vision um but but i like how you're using that that term ownership you know you're taking ownership of this you're not just one of the one of the cogs Right. In in this, you're not just there as part of part of the big machine, um, and I and I think that's one of those things that is really the driving force, I guess you could say, in private business and small town workforce is taking that ownership. You know, you can you can work for AMA and you can be part of that and you can make a great living and you can feel that you're contributing, but you know, do you have that ownership of it? Do you have that personal stake? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Jared, Jared and I are partners. We're, we're partners in a firearms business. Um, but we were talking before we started the recording. If that business goes under, we're fine. We have, we have full-time jobs on the side. Those are the ones that support our families and we are, those are our careers. We do that because we love them. Um, but when it comes to that small town business, you've got to have that passion. You've got to have that desire for it. Well, that passion is so necessary, isn't it guys? Because you're taking a risk, even mm-hmm. with even with full time jobs, yep. with uh, with I would hope benefits in, in some other fashion, you know that supports your families. You're still taking a risk by starting a, a firearms company, and it's exciting. It's right. it's mm-hmm. enthralling. Oh, it's definitely. it's it's scary some, and that's what makes it exciting. Now, when you can take ownership of those risks, and then you can start steering your own ship. After you work out the kinks. After you work out the the sails on the sailboat and how you're going to go straight, you know, then everything starts focusing up and it becomes so exciting. Then every day is what you make of it. You know, you know, Mm -hmm. it's it's just sometimes it's as simple as that, and sometimes it's so simple an answer, or so simple a thought rather that I think people kind of dismiss it. That if you can wake up every day taking ownership of your own actions. And how you choose to attack that day will determine the success you've had that day. Mm-hmm. That's what it's all about. I mean, that's that's all we have in life, I think. I mean, yeah. truly. Yeah. Oh, d- definitely. And I think, too, when it comes to these small-town businesses, and, you know, I, I don't know what the true statistic is, but it's something like greater than 50% of all small businesses 
go bankrupt or close within five years. Yeah, so, yeah some, something weird. Like that, it, it's always it, it, it's always changing. Time. Yeah, so. um, but I think what they're missing is I don't know that anybody ever looks at the why. I think they just go with oh, it's a small town business and they didn't have the capital or they didn't they didn't do this. But I think a lot of it is. You are taking ownership of your business, but what I see from you and your business model, and it goes all the way down to your employees, is you're taking ownership of the community. You are not just a business that you open your doors certain days of the week, and then you're done. You know, what I'm seeing is you open your doors, but you're there to help your community. You're there to help the other businesses. You know, you're, you're there, there. There's customer service in every industry or there should be there should be yeah <laughs> should yeah be. correct there, there should be we're not going to get into uh the big box stores or fast food but it is that i mean it, we keep coming back to the word ownership you know you're taking ownership of your community you're taking ownership of your business the the big one when it comes to that customer service i see is you know when you have customers like myself who you know it's you guys aren't open on Sunday, but I need feed, you know, I, I need bedding for my horses. And it's like, you know, okay, I can come grab six bales because they know I'm going to pay them on Monday. Or, you know, I, I, I think we both always get a good joke about I'll come in and I'll pay for my feed, leave it on the dock. And then three days later, I come in and you're like, hey, uh, Don, you ever going to pick up that feed that's on the dock? <laughs> yeah, we call that Wallace time. Yeah. yeah <laughs> it's, hey, you know what? I'm, I, it works for me. Yeah. Um, but again, we're coming down to that. How many other businesses are going to operate in that manner? Mm-hmm. How many other businesses, how many other towns can I say that I'm going to leave $100 worth of feed on a dock on a main road in town, and I'm going to come back three days later, and it's yeah. still sitting there? Yeah, well, and, th- and that might speak a little bit to our business. That that speaks greatly to the people that live mm-hmm. in the Very Gulf so. Valley. Uh, yeah. th- I think that speaks directly to that. Mm-hmm. But you, you have a good point about communities. One of the things we've done to to establish and continually establish ourselves here recently is we like to operate from a community standpoint at a larger level than just where we live. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're involved in a bunch of uh, board of directors positions and and good organizations yeah. to, to help drive the needle for our region. I consider our region to be at least a four or five county area around here, if not the entire state of Ohio. So I operate in a lot of my uh, a lot of my good endeavors. Uh, my wife and I, my family, we operate more at that level than we do, say, the the straight Belleville or Butler specific levels, because there's a lot of good people doing a lot of good things Mm -hmm. in those regards. Our time and our um, abilities just happen to to fall more in line with that that county level. But, you know, we do things. We stay involved in the community, the uh, Richland Area Chamber and Economic Development. Uh, We're board members there. Uh, The Ohio Bird Sanctuary, Love I that de- place. Yeah, that's you know we're board members there, and and these are all customers of ours too. Uh, the idea works. Oh my goodness, I'm I'm gonna miss somebody I know, uh, but we're we are involved in a, in a lot of boards specifically to benefit our area. I'm not so conceited as to think that I'm gonna make a big difference. However, if I can put some efforts behind someone else's efforts as well. Or maybe I bring the occasional idea to the table that can help us realize our potential in some way, in a various, some various type of ways, then fine. I'm, I'm all the more better for doing it. The business is in better position for us having done that. The people with whom we are trying to develop relationships um, stand uh, better from that approach. And so... Uh, we're just in that vein. We, we always try and move the needle. For instance, right now we are working closely with the Richland County Commissioners, the government of uh, the villages of Belleville, and, and some others, uh, but mainly Belleville. Uh, also, the governments or the governor's office and the lieutenant governor's office, ODOT, ODNR, all these. We're trying to pull everyone together right now to address our downtown Belleville flooding situation. In fact, we had the governor's representatives and the lieutenant governor's representatives on a conference call with uh, with Commissioner Banks of Richland County, with Mayor Brankus of Belleville, and with Larry uh, of Belleville, Wyrick of Belleville. We met with ODOT District Three, had the governor's office also on a Zoom call, and the lieutenant governor's office. 
to pull something together to address the Clear Fork and its flooding situation. I mean, it is getting to a point where we just need to have like a festival around it. I mean, it, <laughs> yeah. it, it's almost a yearly occurrence. Yeah. It's like, hey, it's the Downtown Belleville Kayak Festival. But and, and, and that's the cool thing. That's 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 what we're trying to put ourselves in positions to be able to do. Affect the local area and everyone who lives, works, and otherwise uh, occupies our space. Mm-hmm. Let's all get better. Let's just yeah. get better. You know, and that, that's what we're trying to do. So, yeah. and, and we're trying to do it in a way that has actual concrete outcomes, not just oh, I feel good about myself right. because I put on a, mm-hmm. yeah, a, a fancy yeah. nameplate and I went to a board meeting and sipped coffee with my pinky out with uh, <laughs> the heads of this and that industry. I, you know, yeah. whatever. And, and I think everybody knows those other businesses out there that you sit back and you go, why? Why are they in, involved in that? There, there's no reason. There's no connection other than. Well, they've got all these listeners. They've got all these Facebook followers. I need to get my my name out there, so I'm going to help them. You know, and one of the things that you know, just talking to people around town, there's so much that your family, this business, does for the community that isn't advertised. Yeah. You know, you're doing it because your 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 intent is not to get business. Your intent is to support business. Yep. You yep. know, the the bird sanctuary. That's yeah. the one I love because again, we go back to the very easily it could have just been dollars it could have just easily been we're going to help you with advertising we're going to we're going to get you some revenue um but it wasn't it goes back to that blood and sweat equity you know you were there physically taking time away from the farm taking time away from the business maybe not your family because i know they came out and helped but you're still taking that time away you were actually there physically helping build the new structures that they have out at the bird sanctuary yeah and and another Another way we've done that too, probably the way that's going to result in the most uh, more people being cognizant of what we're working on is that we work also with the Richland County Regional Planning mm-hmm. Commission, and I'm a voting board member on that, and that that helps our area as well. Those are the activities that mm-hmm. you know, hitting a couple of nails at the uh, Ohio Bird Sanctuary. Making some decisions for regional planning and representing, by the way, representing the rural areas when I do go to these meetings, representing uh, the townships of our area, uh, kind of representing the people that live intentionally more rurally yeah. than, than those who might live in Mansfield and whatnot. That's the other perspective I have to bring to all this. Yeah. But yeah, we, I, I love it. I enjoy yeah. it. And, it, and it's, I think it's a, it's a great business model. For these other small businesses, well, of you know, course it, that 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 are that are collapsing all around us, but then they're like, "Oh my goodness, what happened?" And it's like, "Well, I don't know. Nobody knew you. Yeah, no, nobody know you can get away with running a Walmart and having nobody know you because people are going to go to Walmart because they go to Walmart. That period. Yeah. That's it. Not not for this the stellar service. You know, they're going to go there because they go there. They're going to go to these small businesses because they know the people there. We for years in years have confused availability with quality yes we just exactly. always always have we say if there's a store maybe it has big boxes in it <laughs> and <laughs> and um if it's available at sunday at three in the morning so you can go pick up your bud light and diapers i don't know, whatever you buy you know um <laughs> then we confuse that that being availability with quality yeah. So what we do and what other businesses in our area do, all of Richland County, I know a lot of these small business owners, and we all think similarly anyway, and that is don't compete on that. Mm-hmm. Don't compete on straight price or availability. Yeah. You're only setting yourself up for a disappointment. Mm-hmm. You cannot compete on price with Walmart. You cannot compete on availability with Target. Don't do it. So then you're asked, well, how do you compete? Quality. Customer service, ability to move the needle. Compassion. Compassion. Mm-hmm. You have to love what you do. Mm-hmm. The, the best piece of business advice I've ever had in my life came while I was in college. I was in Mel Hellitzer. He's somewhat known um, journalist PR guy who was teaching at OU in, in the Scripps School of Journalism. He, he's a, an accomplished playwright. He's been in everything. He's kind of a known guy. Yeah. He said... During the, the final class of my senior year, the capstone class that you had to have, you either got an A or an F. And if you misspelled <laughs> one word one time, you got an F. You know, one of those deals. Yeah. We've all had them. He said, though, the key to success in business is not, is, is not only showing people 
that you love them and care about them. You have to mean it. Yeah. He mm-hmm. said it's all these businesses that, that claim to care for people is great. Everyone does. No business says, ah, I hate you. Come and give me your money. <laughs> right. So, uh, But he said you have to show people you care about them, and you have to mean it. Mm-hmm. Right. If you don't mean it, get out. You're not gonna. You might have success in the short term, right. but you are not setting yourself up for long term success. You right. have to mean it, and that always resonated with me. Uh, in fact, when I do um, speeches or presentations in front of groups, that's one of the things I always lead with. You have to show people you love them, genuinely care about mm-hmm. them. That's where it comes through. Then in customer service, we'll we'll load everyone's vehicles for them. Yeah. Uh, you know, seven buildings on a two block campus. It, we do that. For good sense, anyway, because we there are a lot of things we have in a lot of different locations on a pretty big campus in, mm-hmm. in, in downtown Belleville here. But we're more than happy to load your car for you. We make recommendations. If you, Don, if mm-hmm. you come in and you have a question about horse betting, and it's something that we're not able to answer, you're never going to hear from us, or <laughs> you shouldn't hear from us. I don't know. Go away. Yeah, or exactly. I don't know. Call my manager. I no. It's well, ma'am, sir. We don't know. Uh, but we'll find out, and we'll let you know. And then we actually do it. You've got to follow up on what you're going to do. A lot of people don't get that. And, you know, small businesses in any in any area like this, there's going to be a little bit of cannibalism. We've done some right. ideas here that have worked that were then picked up by uh, friendly businesses with whom I suppose we have a bit of a – a uh, competitive, friendly battle. Uh, they've mm-hmm. they've started carrying the same products to sell them based on the success that we've had. Mm-hmm. You're going to have a little bit of that. I'm yeah. if we've done it, it's been unintentional, but I, I'm sure we've done it as well. Mm-hmm. But it's that's a small town. So how do you win? How do you win those battles? How do you win those battles when when um, the oh sorry the, when the stressed out mom of three has to run into a store to get a bag of dog food? And now it's coming down to truly convenience or quality. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. we can be of highest quality, of fair price, and of tremendous convenience if we choose to be. Right. That's what we've chosen to be. Not everyone does. The moment a small business realizes that those should be guiding principles is the moment they start making changes mm-hmm. to accommodate as such. I, it just yeah. Eventually, you have to come to this conclusion as a small business owner. Or the decision will be made for you. The conclusion oh, will be definitely. reached for right. you. Yeah. Yeah. When when you're getting to the, you know, helping out the customers, the customer service part of it, um, there's also that knowledge base. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I come here, you know, we've got, right now we're just down to horses and chickens, but we've had pigs, we've had goats, we've had sheep, dogs, cats. Um, it, it's just... It, whatever my wife finds we get and but we don't know that much about it you know i grew up i grew up over in madison township in an apartment um, my wife grew up over in ontario um she has family um that are farmers um her mother did 4-h but that was it i didn't know about 4-h ffa any of that stuff till i moved to belleville i was what you would consider a city kid without living in the city um but, you know, we come in here and it's like, you know, hey, this is what's going on with my horse. W- what what are your thoughts, Gary? Yeah. You know, and it's straight up. I, I trust him. I trust his opinion. Um, and I think it all comes from the top down. You guys are the owners. You're the face of the company. But at the end of the day, your staff's knowledge, your staff's caring oh. about, about, I mean, I can come in here and... You know, they ask about my family. They ask, you know, when my mother-in-law was ill, I'd come in and, you know, hey, how's, how's your mother-in-law doing today? How's your wife doing today? How are your kids doing? How'd they do in the last meet? Um, when it and, and again, everybody always makes fun of me, but I, I don't remember names. Your I aunt. don't either. <laughs> it, it, was, it was your aunt that used to work here, right? Yeah, Margie. Yeah, yep. Mar- yeah thank you. Yeah, you're right. It is Margie. Yeah. <laughs> um, your aunt's name. But, um, you know, you'd come in and it was always, well, hey, Don, how you doing? How's Carrie doing? How are your kids doing? What's going on? It was it was that fact of, again, I, I jokingly said at the beginning, it's like you're coming over to your buddy's place. And my wife loves the fact that you're here, but she hates it as well because I can't come in and just be like, I need this and this. And then I go home. It's like, an I need this later. and this. Yeah, this <laughs> and this. And then 45 minutes to an hour later, I'm like, oh, crap. Kara just texted me. I got to get home. Yeah. You know, and it's and it's not mean. It's just you come here and you hang out. I buy my stuff. I know that I'm getting a good price. Yeah. 
But at the same time, again, I'm getting quality, but I'm also putting that money towards your staff. Well, and here's a couple things about that. One is I'm glad you said uh, that you guys both said that you feel when you come in here that it's uh, an environment more than just retail space. It's a... uh, a community more than just a gathering of people. It's you know you know what we're saying. We're all saying yeah. the same thing there. Yeah. That is so important to us. That's actually one of the tenets of of what we do. Yeah, and and and, and well, and we got that from other local businesses. Mm-hmm. You know, Whitey's Barbershop has been a mainstay in Belleville, Ohio, since the beginning of time. Yes, Whitey would tell you as such himself. Mm-hmm. He is he was actually an inspiration for some of that creating that. You know, I can remember as a kid. Uh, 12 years old, riding my bike down to Whitey's Barbershop on a Saturday morning to <laughs> get a haircut and a donut. When you don't go there for haircuts anymore? Well, no. there. Yeah, okay, yeah, right. Chief. <laughs> <laughs> for, for those listening on the radio, I'm a little bit follically <laughs> and <laughs> impaired up top. Uh, but but that, that, was the, that was the environment. Mm-hmm. That was the selling point. Whitey knew what he was doing. He was rewarding his customers. Come in on a Saturday, get you know, kick your feet up a little bit, yeah. get a haircut, talk about sports, have a donut. Three hours later, yeah, after exactly. you got your ten minute haircut, but nobody complains. But and here's the thing: why couldn't we be like that? And mm-hmm. if we, if by embracing that, we are able to start or facilitate conversations among customers that lead to other opportunities for those people, mm-hmm. or that lead to ideas for us or that lead to whatever that's that's what it's about i do not ever want to be the the guy that doesn't greet someone when they come in yep. sell yeah. someone a bag of dog treats and then wishes them or don't even wish them well don't know who the person is i, I want to know people who come in yeah. um and we do and we do and we've done a pretty good job of it you know mm-hmm. we don't we don't sell anything online yet we've sold we've made sales to people from 40 what is it now? 49 states and 15 countries. I think we're missing New Mexico. So any of you New Mexico listeners out there that want to come to uh, we have contacts, LV Million yeah. and Trade and buy something, we, we sure would appreciate in, it. We got a few friends in New Mexico. <laughs> but but I would not be talking here to you gentlemen about any and, – and would not be uh, blushing at your kind words on the Clark family and our businesses if it weren't for the employees. I mean, let's be honest. Gary Carter – is the single best feed mill manager in our business? Uh, no, no doubt. He's not. None. He's not. He's not the best in Richmond County. He's not the best in Ohio. He's he's the best there is. He does, and, and we so we embrace that. His business is selling shelled corn and Swan mm-hmm. Creek candles and dog food. Our business is giving him the resources to be able to do that. I, exactly. You and know, and his, his 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 knowledge base. Yeah is ridiculous when it comes to this you know and it's you know other people in the shop when he's not here he's dealing with another customer you'll ask him questions and they they might have to look something up he doesn't have to look anything up he knows who supplies it he knows how much it is he knows what the current rates are because as you know as most of the people that are listening to us probably don't know feed is a constantly fluctuating item yes you know it's it's not like going to a big box store and it's like the price is always going to be the same, right. especially when you're talking about bulk feed. And we're not talking, yep. yeah, we're not talking about the pre-bagged stuff, which their prices fluctuate a little. Um, but again, it's it's that knowledge base, and and not one time with the dumb questions I have come in here and asked, and it's been many. Have I been made to feel like it was a dumb question? No, no, and, not and you one never time. will, or you never should. You never will from us, uh, Gary Carter. Chuck Statzer, uh, Adrian Pivel, Kale Clark, my son, Jamie yes. Clark, my wife, Maddie Clark, though she's in college now, is my daughter. She also works here. Jason Stewart, his son, his one son, uh, uh, Justin, used to be here. Now his other son, Jacob, mm-hmm. is here. Uh, Aaron Carter is the son of Gary Carter. He, he works down in our feed production facility. Uh, we have families work here. So there are one, two, let's see, there's... Between my dad and my mom and the four of us, there's six Clarks here, two Carters here, used to be three, now two Stewarts here, and Mike Conrad and Chuck Statzer. I mean, yeah. it, we like to stay family, yeah, and, and we and empower these guys. Yeah. We, we say, we, I am not smarter than anyone here. I just have my specific skill set might be over here, and theirs is over mm-hmm. here. So we, 
we are a community that must embrace each other and our duties and our abilities and our roles mm -hmm. to be successful. Yeah. The owners or the ownership groups that understand that are the ones with whom you will be talking as you continue your podcast. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the ones that make it, that decision, that realization, are the ones that are built for longevity, mm -hmm. built for success, built for sustainability, much like our communities and our townships mm -hmm. around here. And, and I think, too, with your family, you know, there there is something to be said for a family-run business. Then there's also something to be said for a family-run business when the family enjoys it. Mm -hmm. And the family likes being there. Mm -hmm. You know, your kids obviously have the same passion that you and Jamie do for this business, for this community. I've talked to them on the side. They're wonderful kids. You know, I'll bump into them every now and then. And, you know, on one hand, it's a family business. But on the other hand, from what I get from your kids, they 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 are not expected to be part of the family business. Right, right. It's you go do what you want to do in life. If you come back here, great. Yeah. This is it, what I want to do. This right. is what my wife wants to do. This is how they build their experience. This mm, is how yep. they build exactly that template for what they want to do in life in, in life now. My daughter Maddie, uh, been working here for years, of course. Mm -hmm. you, yeah. You guys I think you've met Maddie before. Mm -hmm. She is now at OU in Athens studying forensic linguistics. That'll, oh, really? that'll be very helpful to the business. Because, yes. of course, if you grow up on a farm, you're going to go into forensic linguistics. Of course. Everybody yes. has. Yeah, sure. Every, you know, you got one of those. Everyone's got a forensic linguistics degree in their back pocket, don't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah. But, so, what, what, why work here then? She develops skills, people skills, talking to people. Oh, yeah, absolutely. She, she has buy into her community now. Mm -hmm. You have to like... You don't have to like where you're from, but if you're going to be successful where that is, you'd better like where you're from. I, I, I suppose is a better way to say yeah, it. Yeah, or do yeah. something else. Or yeah. do something else. Because I get the feeling just after listening to you talk and just from the outside looking in that uh, you and your wife could probably make boatloads of money doing something else. So yeah. you actually want to be here doing it. This yeah. is what we choose. <laughs> yeah. yeah, A lot of people don't get that. I, I've... Again, I, I sit on some boards with some very well-known <clears throat> people in our area, business movers, effectors, effectors of economy. Yeah. And I've had a couple questions from some of these ladies and gentlemen in the past that, that have said, well, don't you want to make the big, big bucks? Right. Well, sure. I mean, who's going to turn <laughs> that down? But, no. but at the risk of not doing this anymore, right. absolutely not. I am, I am knee-deep, more than knee-deep, in quite a few projects here where I'm trying to leave something. I'm not so, I can be cynical, but mm -hmm. I'm not so disheartened to think that progress cannot be made. Mm. We have to, and you guys in doing your podcast are finding that out, and, every, and I know you guys, you guys are, are of similar mind. If you don't buy into what you're doing, if you don't have that passion, get out of it now, yep. right? Not not tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Now, get out of it right now and go find something else, because you're gonna you're gonna loathe it. You're yeah. gonna regret it. You're, and I, you're setting yourself up for for heartbreak, if yeah. nothing else. Yeah. And and I think that's why a lot of these small businesses are closing, is because they get into it thinking I'm gonna own my own business. I'm gonna make my own hours, and I'm gonna make money like nobody's business. Yeah. And then they find out that it's not like that. I, I mean, owning your own business. I mean. Your your truck. I I know for a fact if your truck's not here, it's because you're at the farm. <laughs> yeah. You know, I I I know that. Well, and I know when you used to work for Belleville, even I uh, oh, I yeah. was told that by you and your fellow officers. Well, we know your truck, we know your wife's car, and yep. we know if it's at the mill that everything's cool. Yeah, yeah. six yeah. o'clock six o'clock in the morning, drive by and see the big silver Dodge. Oh, yeah. Donnie's here. Yeah, probably because you can't be here in the middle of the day because. You're at the farm. Yeah. You know, and I think it comes, you know, we've been talking today and, you know, bumping into Kale at the football game. I was talking to him, you know, car trouble. <laughs> Everybody thinks, wow, you own seven buildings. You probably own more retail space in Belleville than anybody else. You must be loaded. <laughs> ah, about that. Um, but again, it, com it comes down to that passion. If you don't have that passion, you know, Jared in the real world, firefighter, me, police officer. We, we did not get, I don't know about you, but I did not get into my job to make money. You, you don't. Right. Um, you've got to have that passion for it. Now, if you want to run, uh, you know, you want to live in corporate America and hate your job and have tons of money, that's you. But, but yeah, right, exactly. But here's on the flip side. 
those people in corporate America that are doing it and loving it, good. Yeah, good, good for them. Good yeah, for them. Exactly. Uh, just find what it is that you enjoy or find something that you can tolerate to set yourself up for that next stage, right. which is only going to grow your passion even incrementally until mm-hmm. you finally hit that that mm-hmm. profession where you feel fulfilled, where yeah. you're able to get your bills paid, and we're able to do some good work. That's yeah. all. That's all we're so, trying to do. So that kind of pulls me into there. There was there was one specific item that ever since the day I found this out about your business model and one of the things that you do as a business always told me from the get go, you will get my money. Again, I I don't have a job that pays a ton of money, so I got to watch every penny feed for my for my animals and you know or your family yeah yeah, yeah. yeah for my family <laughs> um and and just the trinkets in the shop and and we'll get into some of that here in a little bit as well some of the ways that you give back to the community one of the big ones around here of course is ffa 4h mm-hmm. um richland county fair um we for those of you that don't know this next week is going to be uh the what is it the like 2000th belleville world's fair it's like, it's like one, we're in like the 160s or something no we? we're uh i think this year is 172 okay it's one of the oldest continually operated say for a few years because of world war ii and COVID. yeah uh street fairs agriculturally based street fairs in all of america I yeah believe. i mean i mean when you think about the fact of it literally took a global pandemic and a world war to yeah. keep the to keep a I mean and everybody wants oh it's a little street fair, again it's so weird I grew up in Madison Township I never knew about the street fair until I moved to Belleville in two thousand and one. You never knew about the I, Belleville I, it World was, it was Fair. Mad. It I, is not the it's not the local fair man. I lived it's a, the Belleville lived World's, World's Fair. I lived a sheltered life. I apologize. <laughs> um, but now that I do, we go every year. I mean, sure. the only thing that stopped me from going is my my three and a half year stint in the military in uh, El Paso, Texas. And um, last year, wife and daughter had COVID. The exact same week of fair also happened to be the same week that my son's appendix burst. So you had a bad week. Last I did. It was yes. it was a rough time. Yeah. Um, but the thing that's always gotten me is, and I asked the very question: Why don't we see LZ Milling and Trade bidding on animals and we, we know this isn't an agricultural podcast, so for a lot of you that don't know, 4-H, FFA, kids are raising animals, they're doing projects, and then part of that process is at the end of the week or at a certain day during the fair, their animals are auctioned off and they're purchased, and typically um, purchased by local businesses. You know, traditionally, these bi- yep, traditionally right. yeah. Um, and so you will see a lot of these larger privately owned businesses paying a, a Fairly decent amount. I mean, two, three thousand dollars for a steer, seven, eight hundred dollars for for a, a pig or more. Yes. Yeah, they're. I yeah, mean, it's it, it got a little wonky this year. It, it was. Did. It was. It got, it got a little out of hand. The values I were very up this year. Yeah, but, but I think I think they were making up for the year or two of COVID. Yeah. Um, but my question always was, why didn't we see Elsie at mm-hmm. either the street fair or the Richland County or Knox County because those are the two main counties closest. Why we didn't see LZ bidding on animals? Good question and a fair question. That is probably the question we get more than any other. LZ, if you're trying to uh, make quality feed for people, if you're trying to put quality feed onto all the area farms in this seven or eight county area, why aren't you building on the animals or mm-hmm. bidding, bidding rather on the animals? Again, recognizing that the bidding process on the animals is the culmination of those business models that the kids had been creating Correct. during that whole year. The kids are learning a lot, business, uh, agriculture, everything. And that's a fair question. So why don't we bid on it? Because we reward those kids and recognize their efforts by giving everyone that participates in 4-H or FFA projects at the county fair level, state fair level, uh, local fair level, the Belleville Fair, the Loudonville uh, Street Fairs, all those, uh, we give them all 10% off for oh. every for every cost associated with their project, mm-hmm. not just feed. Uh, actually, we've been a little bit flattered. Some other people have taken the same approach after we started that, which which is great. But that only pertains to feed. If you come in here and you tell me, uh, as as the child, as the the person in charge of this project, that for some reason it takes a fall scented swan creek candle yeah. to uh <laughs> to help your hog get first place at the fair well, i might i don't know maybe i'll fight you a little bit on it but but not a lot i'll give you 10 percent. i mean we yeah 
the kids that put the efforts into this, we reward all of them. Why would I stop from rewarding a specific one or two every year right. when I can benefit the whole community, the, yeah. the community of kids? That's that's been our whole approach. Yeah, and and that's that that one right there. I think at that point we were just coming and getting our feed because it was convenient. I mean, you're less than a mile down the road from my farm, so why drive all the way onto the other side of the county for you know a store that shall not be named? Um, when I can get good quality here, knowledge, and then I found that out. And I was like, "All right, that's it. They're they're getting they're getting my money from this point forward that's because right. I know exactly where it's going back in the community." And then my next question, a little bit of a trick question, because I think I know the answer. Um, do you even track that ten percent that you give these kids? Yeah, actually, we do. Okay, yeah, yeah, we we do, and to, to keep it on the up and up too, because mm-hmm. uh, for every nine well intentioned people out there, there's always going to be the, the knucklehead yeah. that tries to pull one over, right? Yeah. Well, so th- there is, uh, we do keep track of these kids through some paperwork. You know, we have them fill out a form to indicate to us that they're in 4-H and FFA. But, but again, it's it's not so insurmountable as to dissuade children or their families. Uh, so he- here's where I'm coming from. Not so much the tracking and the paperwork, because I've had to fill that paperwork out. And there is, I mean, I, I-, I don't want to offer this as a way, but th- there, you track it, but you're not checking on it. It's not like you're calling... You know the high school being like is is uh, is Abigail Wallace and FFA and is she doing this and this and that because I think that would be instrumental. My question is: Are you tracking the dollars? Are you keeping track of how much you're doing? And I, I mean, I'm sure it's tax purposes and things like that. But sure. you know, not asking for that dollar amount. But I mean, I'm I'm gonna ju- I'm gonna go out on a limb. I'm not that great with math, and I hate it. I I really hate math. I'm gonna guess that you're probably with that ten percent is a considerable about more than bidding on two or three animals at the fair significantly yes and it's not even close right it's 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 a significant investment we've made into our local 4-h and ffa communities Mm -hmm. and it's one it's one that we've always done and it's one that we uh as of now always have plans to continue i suppose never say never but yeah but we're always gonna if not through that way always always help these kids why do we do it well selfishly sure we're trying to get your business in mm-hmm. here we are a business this is not a nonprofit. right however we want to support you from uh, the standpoint of totality mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i want to help you in everything you do i don't want to just sell you one bag of horse feed one time right i want to be your go-to source mm-hmm. this is another way to do that this is i i want to be the people you go to with uh, with challenges, with problems, with opportunities, with uh, when when uh, as as little Bob and and uh, little Jane are learning how to to do their 4-H projects, I want to become their trusted source too. Mm-hmm. But I also want to recognize that these kids in our area, particularly, and even though our service area is quite quite a bit larger than just the Clear Fork Valley, in fact, probably only 25 percent of our business relies on the uh, the clear fork valley a lot of the kids that undertake these projects are doing it out of their own pocket oh very I much mean, so a lot yeah. of them are. yeah these kids this 10 percent to the kids is significant mm-hmm. yeah. it's significant to each and every one of them now total dollars yeah yeah it's quite yeah. a bit more than if we'd have bid on a, a yeah. llama at the fair or something yeah. yeah oh we can bid on llamas that would be awesome <laughs> um i want a llama well i feel like you're ingraining no pun intended with the grain but you're ingraining <laughs> nice. yourself like in, in the uh in the culture quite a bit too that's yeah. it that that that's what it has to be about it, doesn't it i mean isn't mm-hmm. that doesn't that it, if you because per, yeah here I am. I get so excited. I stammer on my words. Go for it. <laughs> well, because if you are intentionally setting up your business in a geographically defined area with a, uh, let's just say, sparsely population or sparsely populated uh, base, you have to endear yourself to, first of all, a larger area. Yeah. Second of all, to those people in their specific needs. And third, these are the same people you're living with. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. This is a small community. So if you if you tick off Frank at the store at the mill at LZ Milling and Trade in mm-hmm. downtown Belleville, and then you go to where Frank works, uh, he it's coming right back at you. Right. I mean, you just that's just that's no, life. And, that's and I don't even want to say it's a rumor mill um, because <laughs> this I mean it's not. It's like straight up. Did you mean that? 
Yeah. Huh? Did you mean to do that? <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice. Oh, look at that unintended dad pun. I don't like it. Um, and I don't even want to say there are rumors, but I have, you know, living in the community, um, being former law enforcement in this community, I have seen several businesses that I will 100% say the reason they went out of business is because they, you know, they screwed over one or two people. And that went through the rest of the town and they couldn't do business here. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's, that's a, that's a huge thing. I mean, there are several businesses here that, you know, in any other community, I don't know that they would stay in business because this is a community area. Well, I mean, it, it really, it really truly is. I mean, you've got places like Whitey's who I, I don't think has raised his price for a haircut in probably 20 years. Um, you know, you've got places like Whitey's, um, you know, Smith's True Value. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's, it's again, it's that business model of care about the customer, and the rest will kind of take care of itself. See, yeah, here's the thing about Rich, Richland County as a whole. Yes. Has one of the one of the more proactive business bases anywhere you'll mm-hmm. find anywhere they're doing and, an and excellent I, I'm, job i'm telling you there we have we have key leaders and decision makers in positions around this county that's only going to lead to bigger and better things for richland county whatever that looks like and what are your whatever your definitions of that would be we have some really really good people in place uh everything from business development to tourism mm-hmm. to to government leadership there are excellent people Belleville in particular, Belleville and Butler, we have some great business people in this area. We do. We have some really good people that are willing to take risks, but not bet the farm. People willing to put themselves out there, but not unexposed. We right. have, we just have some tremendously smart business people around yeah. here. And, we and really I, do. I think, too, it's almost, I, I get, I've had friends from all over the country that have come to visit, and, and I'm sure Jared has, too, from our time in the military. Um, and they all say the same thing. And they never once do they mean it as an insult. It's a very Mayberry community. It's a compliment. Yeah. You know, I, I 100% take that as a compliment. And it goes down to, you know, uh, if if people have never walked into LZ Milling and Trade, it, it's not what you would think about when you hear feed mill. It's yeah, not. No. You walk in and you, you have tons of housewares. Um, Duke Cannon soap. It's one of my favorites. I got him to start selling it here. It's awesome. <laughs> Lather, <laughs> lathers up like, the way out. Lathers up you, like uh, no one's business. I think Don already knows the story. And I, you told, I heard you tell it a little bit uh, about the mill. Isn't it the oldest? Yeah. So we've been so focused on the overhead, the 30,000 view yeah. Uh, yeah. Of, of everything going on in our region, in our town, and how, how in great position we find ourselves. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the mill is so cool. It's, it's, when we acquired this property and started LZ Milling and Trade in 2011, it okay. was specifically because we were farming about 2,000 acres at the time. My father, myself, Charlie Crowner, my uncle Brian Kesselmeyer, the four of us were farming about 2,000 acres at the time, which is a lot for four people. And that's, yeah. That was over mm-hmm. two counties where our biggest field was 40 acres. So that's a lot of on the road with tractors. Yeah, We were raising non-GMO corn. That is uh, conventional corn for for the agriculturalists out there, non-genetic, genetically modified organisms or, or whatever you call it. I don't know. Anyway, we're raising non-GMO corn. We wanted to develop a market, a marketplace to take it. Still to this day, non-GMO corn is not recognized at, uh, at the commodities level when you take your corn from the field. Up to the big terminals, for instance, the big grain terminal terminals in Mansfield or the ones down in Mount Vernon, and have a separate line for non-GMO corn. So we developed or we we identified uh, an opportunity. To say if we had non-GMO corn, could prove and, mm-hmm. and be real about it, be honest about it, right. that this is non-GMO corn. We feel that that could lead to some business, and so we we use that as our as our trampoline okay. to, to build the rest of this on. So we acquired uh, the facility here in 2011, which was just, at the time, the, the big mill mm-hmm. and the store. Off of that, it's grown into the seven, soon to be eight uh, buildings. Um, uh, big news coming later. Ooh. Uh, Heard but, it here first. Yeah, but so we, and, it, and we use every square inch of it. Yeah. But yeah, the mill. The mill predates the Civil War. That's insane. The mill predates... <laughs> 
the U.S. Civil War. Think about that. And it's still being used mm-hmm. as was originally intended. Now, there are a lot of mills yet still standing around. The ones that are still mills don't don't share uh, the age with this one. This one just mm-hmm. predates some of those. Other ones that are still standing from that same time period are now an antique shop right. or uh, or dilapidated, falling mm-hmm. apart, or, or something. Right. There are a few feed mills out there, not many. But we are still being used as was originally intended. We're still using the same designs with the overhead bins that they built. Yeah, that's the crazy thing to me. That yeah, we're we're still using the same bins that they stored corn in in 1864. Mm-hmm. We're still using to store corn in. Yeah. And in fact, when I take people tours of the mill and I tell them that fact, I always see them scurry out of the way a little bit for fear that it's just going <laughs> to collapse down yeah. on them. But yeah, yeah it's it's. It's purpose built. It's still used as was intended. It was uh, donkey powered at, at one time, even though we're right nice. on the, the Clear Fork River. Right. Um, we were donkey powered, and we know this because, again, small town. There was a gentleman who worked here until his 80s, which happened to be in the 1980s, and his grandpa also worked here. His <laughs> grandpa remembered uh, working here prior to electricity. Wow. And so Chuck Rule. It was a gentleman's okay. name. Chuck Rule would tell us stories that his grandpa would tell him about working here when you'd have to smack the donkey in the backside to get some corn up the grain elevator. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. I just think that's that's fascinating. Oh, it, it is. It, yeah. it, and it just it helps keep the community identity. I mean, there are so many communities out there now that a business would have come in and they would have seen the mill as a hindrance. Sure. Oh, we, we need to tear this down and we need to build something brand new and make it look, you know, make it look nice and shiny. But I mean, I don't know. And, There'd be and, riots in the street. Oh, yeah. here? Oh, oh yeah, sweet yeah, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I, you know as well as I do, how many kids over the years get their senior pictures taken on the dock <laughs> and next to stuff? And I mean, it's just, it's one of those things where it's it's just become that mainstay in town. And it's the fact of you're using your business. Now, I don't know this for, for fact, but you know, you're not using federal dollars or state grants to, to right. keep the mill looking good. You're, you're using your business money to keep a historic part of this town there. Slow growth is sustained growth. Yes. So every time the decisions we are making, still yet 11 years into it now, are business decisions in, in terms of growth. We're, we're still trying to grow the business, and mm-hmm. we still are growing the business. We're probably four times larger now than when we started 11 years ago. Oh, and, easily. And we have a lot more space to grow as we continue reaching the different corners of Ohio and Michigan and mm-hmm. Indiana and Pennsylvania. But um, one, one of the great things about that is um, – where was I going? <laughs> oh, yeah. So so we want to get – eventually all seven buildings here are going to visually match. They're all historic buildings in their own mm-hmm. right. Of course, we have the pre-Civil War mill, the – the building in which we are right now is our storefront. It's our twenty, I don't know, what twenty four hundred square foot showroom, mm-hmm. and th- this is where we have all the fun stuff too. And the Watkins yeah. Vanilla and the Lodge cast iron cookware and the uh, the belts, the Amish made leather belts and the the hats. Uh, bird yeah. seed. I mean, my goodness, bird seed yeah. for us is a big mover. So we we move all that from here. This building itself was built in like the eighteen eighties. I think okay. and so. We came in and, and redid it, made it more functional, mm-hmm. made it compliant uh, with because that's the right thing to do. And and uh, we did all that stuff, and we're going to do that with the other buildings we have on our campus. The old Carnation Milk House. Mm. We we still have old timers that can remember bringing in jugs of milk off the back of old uh, Model A's and whatnot with their grandpa. You know, back in the day. Wow, I can we, imagine them coming in here and seeing yeah. it still pretty. Oh yeah, and they so they still Some, comment on it. One oh, of the yeah. buildings across the road from us right now, which happens to be our grass seed and fertilizer production facility, is the former Belleville bus garage. Yeah. When it was the Belleville High School, of course. The there's a building next to us over here, which happens to house a lot of our uh, feeds. Not only uh, the feeds that we make are made fresh into your order come out of the mill, but we also carry other manufacturers, mm-hmm. Kalmbach. Uh, we carry uh, a diamond dog food. You know, we do a lot of this kind of stuff. But that's in a warehouse over here that has been a uh, various number of things over years. Frederick Siding Building. Uh, mm-hmm. At one time, the Cliff Fork softball girls <laughs> used it for <laughs> indoor <laughs> batting practice. Yeah, so yeah, a little these, bit of everything. Yeah, the, all these buildings here are 
important to the town mm-hmm. in some way, and it's important to us to keep them important to the town. Right. Yeah. And, and w- what I like about that too is you're you're buying and using pre-existing buildings mm-hmm. that, to be quite honest, probably wouldn't be able to be used for anything else. Um, if, if we weren't here, I, they'd be I, gone. I feel that at least a few of them would be gone. So rather, right. and, and I don't know what the future holds. Maybe maybe one or two of the buildings eventually. I don't know. We might reserve the right to change how they look or, yeah. or build something meeting yeah. more our specs. But it's still always going to be a nod to the area's history. Right. You know, right. We'll always exactly. do, do things in, in, in yeah. that it's such a, way. You know, it's like, I think one of the things people that aren't from the area that might just be stopping by, maybe they're here for the fair, maybe they're here for Prairie Peddler. Bike or just, path is Yeah, a big the one. bike path yeah. right there. You know, they, they stop in. And I think what they're going to notice is, one, there's always somebody right there at the desk mm-hmm. willing to say, hey, what do you need? What do you got? Um, there's not a single real, like, point of sale computer. You know, everything is still on those handwritten receipts, and I don't know if you've got plans on changing that anytime soon. I do not. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, everything's on a handwritten receipt. If you do pay in cash, you've got a cash register that I think predates time. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it just, it fits. You know, I mean, it's it's like nobody comes in and questions, oh, why are they doing that? It's just like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, it has to make sense to us, right? And right. it makes sense to us if it makes sense to the customers. Mm-hmm. From our, In terms of our business, every business, every industry, rather, is going to be unique in and of itself. Ours is such that, how do I sell shelled corn on a computer? Uh, yeah. there, there's I, I sell shelled corn here a hundred different ways. Mm-hmm. Gary, Chuck, and ever and all the guys downstairs, they sell it a hundred different ways. You want it cracked. You want a 50-pound bag. You want a hundred-pound bag. You want a bulk truck ton full of it do you want uh right. do you want to mix with other stuff do you want molasses with it do you want well it's so much more efficient for us right. again because of that knowledge that that uh, exactly. everyone who works here has yeah. it, that's what makes us all go is the employees everything i'm saying only goes because the employees. yeah if, if you threw myself but, or jared behind the register we'd be fired within an hour i would yeah. say <laughs> yeah. maybe 45 minutes for me but yeah, so we stay efficient doing things the way that's already been proven does right. that make us technologically cutting edge absolutely not we are honestly probably idiots when it comes to <laughs> technology and computers and whatnot but uh if it, I don't, if it ain't broke don't fix it it if you know? it results in quality right why would i change anything right why, it, i will not gain efficiency by doing that therefore i will only gain headache so as of right now there's no purpose to doing that I, i'm yeah. not going to gain efficiency yeah and 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 but not to say that you're not willing to change, right, that you're right. not willing to add. I mean, I can remember when we when we first moved back to the Belleville area in end, end of 13, early 14. Um, we left in 2010 for my military stint. So you weren't here yet. It was still just the old dilapidated. I don't know. What was it before it was you RF, guys? It was RFD okay. before us. And, so, and it was a co-op before RFD. Yeah, and we yeah. didn't have animals at the time. So it was just, hey, look the mill. Um, you know, but then we came back and it was feed. Yeah. And then slowly but surely, you you did the addition on the side with all the extra stuff. But I mean, it it is you know I can come in and I can get dog treats, I can get some catnip, I can get oh we need you know I, I always think it's hilarious because I have the mind of a twelve year old boy, but your bag of uh, poultry nipples <laughs> that um, <laughs> I mean, come on they could have come up with something better. I mean yes I get it they're plastic pieces that go into the side what are of you a bucket. To call them chicken nips. <laughs> No, just say you know like i don't know but it's just i always find it hilarious and it's just right there poultry nipples okay yeah, great I bet you chuckle every time you look at it i, do. I really i really do because i'm 12 um but you know you've got things like the watkins you've mm-hmm. got baking you've got t-shirts you guys have the t-shirts your hats your toboggan ski caps yeah. in the winter um the one that always hits with me is um you know no, they're not a sponsor. Nothing like that. I'm not getting any money. But the Duke Cannon stuff. Yeah. Um, absolutely loved it. Used to buy it online. Um, and then I was just kind of chat with you one day. And I was like, listen, this is going to be a really awkward conversation. But we need to talk about soap lather in the shower. And, um, you know. And luck- you said it about exactly like that, I too. I didn't I'm, know what to expect. Yeah, it might have been, oh, a, you know. <laughs> so we need to talk about shower time, Bonnie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But I just kind of offered it, and you were like, hey, you know what? One of our distributors was talking about it, and we were kind of on the fence. Yeah, maybe we'll try it. 
And and I don't know. Maybe the sales have been good for that stuff. I don't know. Maybe they've been tanked, and you're thinking about getting rid of it, and it's just going to be awkward after this. No, nope. but. But it's that thing of you, you listen to the customer and you tried it out. You know how many you know how many lines, guys, we've started because of customer input? Your your input on Duke Cannon directly led to us. And and you said something to us and we had it what, three weeks, four weeks oh, later? Easily. I mean we had yeah. to figure some things out, but we got it. We had a customer ask about the Zanesville, famous Zanesville pottery once. So we uh, went out and got some. Uh, Swan Creek Candles we now sell because it's a candle recognized by some of our customers mm-hmm. as one of your more premier candles and yeah, no good. one in the area at the time was selling it. Now there are a couple people mm-hmm. also selling them, but but I don't mind. I don't mind. I don't mind being on the front end of those right. of those things. But yeah, we we've gotten a lot of things in here because of customer suggestion. Mm-hmm. We're yeah. trying it's a business. Yeah. Give yeah. the offer the people what Give they the people want. what they want. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's sometimes it's pretty simple like that, you know. Yeah. Sometimes that's overthought. Give the people what they want so long as it makes sense for both sides. And so we've done a lot of things uh that way in that vein mm-hmm. it's supported our business model oh very much you know, so feed dog food bird seed these are traditionally low margin business items mm-hmm. it's tough to get rich or even well off at all selling yeah. feed i mean no yeah, one I'm, wants it's feed you put it in your animal and you kiss it yeah. goodbye and, and i'm not mm. gonna say that i probably have like six bars of the soap at my house that i haven't even had a chance to open yet <laughs> you know it's like oh they've got the gunpowder scent i'll take two <laughs> um but I mean, again, you know, for me personally, and I think this is something that falls in the community at large as well, is we as consumers have to be willing to invest in these companies as well. And so for, for your end, you know, you're investing in the other area community businesses by using them. You know, you use them as a consumer as well. Mm-hmm. But me personally, I, I, I do my best to put my money where my mouth is. And if I'm going to talk about living in a small town community and I love my community and I want it this way and I want it that way, I need to be willing. And the people in our community, the people in other communities that have these small businesses that aren't jerks. I mean, we'll, I'll be honest. There are some small business owners out there that are jerks. Well, that's just life. That's, yeah, that, that's, that, that, not, that's, that's just not in general. Bill, Richland, that's just life. Yeah. yeah. But we as consumers, we have to be willing to put our money where our mouth is. We, we have to be willing to support these small businesses because I'll be real honest, if a business closes and everybody's like, oh, just another small town business, why didn't they do this? I'll, I'll look them straight in the face and be like, did when was the last? Yeah, did you go there? Did did you buy anything? Did you go to, you know, I'll name out the other, Bent Spoons. Did you go there and buy some cupcakes or a graduation cake? Did you go to Smith's when all you needed was a box of screws? Well, here's the thing. So so you ask other business people, and you, you guys will, Don, mm-hmm. you guys will ask other business people, why don't people sometimes come in? Well, they just assume we're more expensive. That's the assumption, isn't it? Yeah, it is. If you're a small town business, you, by default, by someone's definition, yep. have to be more expensive. That's not necessarily true. No. Actually, places like uh, Chewy.com, Walmart, Tractor Supply, Rural King, they actually support some of what we do. We don't have the same overhead that they do. Right. I, I mean, we are a small yeah. business. We have yeah. to recognize that and use that the portions of it that dictate or that, that define why we are a small business. Mm-hmm. We have to figure out how to use that to our benefit to our advantage right. right use that maneuverability like you said in the beginning stop trying to compete with stop yeah. trying to compete with walmart yeah. don't yeah. do it let walmart have all the yeah extras uh, they're not going it, away yeah. Yeah. yeah they're not yeah. and again it all it all comes back to that ownership yeah that investment in your customer base loving your customer like part of the family. I don't know how many times I've come in and just off the bat, Gary's like, hey, Don, by the way, um, you need to bring in, if you've got any more of your seniority feed, you need to bring it back because Callback had an issue with it and they forgot to put the molasses in it. So bring it on back. Oh, okay. Yeah. One, my horses were still going to be fed. Two, he remembered, I mean, I, other times, Kara comes in. Hey, uh, Don said we needed feed. Do you remember which kind we, and Gary, right off the bat, boom, yeah, you get the seniority textured. That's what Don likes to get. Two bags of it. Here you go. Yeah. You know, it's that investment. It's that, you know, you'll say right off the bat, you might carry three brands of something, and you'll say right off the bat, hey, this one might do better for what your purpose is. Yeah. It might do better for somebody else, but for what you're doing for your horses, for your pigs, this would be better. You're going to get more value 
for the money that you spend. And I'll be real honest, I'm going to be a horrible consumer and say right now, I would have no money paying a slight margin more for a small town business. Because again, I know you. I know your wife. I know your kids are Look, awesome. Here, how, here. how many high school kids <laughs> walk up to the goofball cop in a Hawaiian shirt at the football game and start up a conversation with them? I wouldn't. Uh, no, I know you wouldn't. You're a I, jerk. I still try and avoid you. I know. No. You do. You do. <laughs> For some reason, I'm going to say your kids take after your wife. Yeah, I'm thinking. But I mean, <laughs> you know, it's that thing of I'm I'm not only, you know, I su- I'm supporting your family. Um you know, not the same as mine, which is, you know, I pay your salary. That's my favorite. Um, oh, yeah. But, but yeah. I, I'm, I'm supporting your family. I'm supporting my community. Well, here's the 100%. thing. 100%. Just give – those people who ultimately come around to, to seeing these podcasts, these talks that we all have, you, you hear the same things, right? Well, you're more expensive. Yeah, all that stuff we've talked eh. about. Those people that are open to the possibility of investigating at least, one, are you actually more expensive right. for item A? And two, if you are, why? Why are you more expensive? Or for how long will you mm-hmm. be more expensive? Right. Maybe they're, they're on sales or whatever. Anyway, the open-minded people, the people that are committed to the area, they kick off the best conversations in here. You oh, know, yeah. When we... We put effort into the mill, obviously. You don't get a 180-year-old mill at perfect. It takes upkeep. And, right. and when we're doing all that, we re-roofed it, local crews. When we re- just recently repainted our store, local crews. When we mm-hmm. do anything, uh, unless we're handcuffed by right. something out of our control, right. we're using local crews. So then we're now completely tied into a local economy. Yeah, okay, maybe they are expensive, Maybe they're not, but their economy is based on the same economy in which we're operating. Right. Therefore, we get we're we're now speaking the same language. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, those people that tie in together and and make the community go around by doing that that's uh, those are good things. Those are very yeah. good things. Oh, you know? yeah, very much. If so. that makes any sense, if you yeah. if you know what I'm saying. There. I mean, it, it it's a cycle. Yeah. You're you're paying into their business. Their business maybe maybe not directly pays into yours. I mean, you you are a little bit of a, a of a niche business when it comes to the fact of your, you know, primarily the feed and mills yeah, and animals. But with but with your stuff on the side, so you might be hiring a, a a local business to paint your place, and they have no intention of buying feed. But here's the thing: I want they, them to. <laughs> yeah, you want them to. But they're investing in the community other ways yeah. because they're a good small business. Well, I mean, they, the w- word gets around. Hey, I'm sure. gonna I'm gonna hire this local guy because he helped out this family or he did this or he's a you know like we've said before, just like everywhere else in the world, there are good small business owners and there are bad small business owners, and everybody knows them. Yeah, everybody knows who to go to to get good quality work. Well, it, it and, all, and they're and they're investing right back into the community that you're supporting. It all goes right back to what I said that Mel Hellitzer told uh, told my class uh, mm-hmm. in 1998, 97 about passion. Right. If you don't have passion and love, it's obvious. Yeah. People are smart. Now, may, maybe groups of people, um, you might, I don't know. You say, boy, this this board's a little silly, or boy, that group of kids is a little silly. I don't know. Whatever. But people are smart. People can see through. Mm-hmm. Uh, bad intentions, or oh, yeah, right. less than good intentions, I should right. say. Yeah, absolutely. So, so staying well intentioned, staying committed to quality, and staying uh, available to do the small things are the defining, often delineating factors between yeah. a successful business and a business that is still yet striving. Yeah, for that success. Yeah. I mean, it's it's why whenever people come in here, I've got two <laughs> lines that all the employees here always make fun of me about because I say the same things over and over. If we get you into our business for a first time, mm-hmm. I'll tell you a little bit about it, tell you a little bit about the history. I might tell you about the, the train wreck that took out the corner of this building that we're in right now or the pictures of uh, that we have of, of people moving potatoes into the mill here. There's a lot of cool things. Mm-hmm. But I'll, I'll always tell people, if you don't see something when you're moving around the showroom that you think we ought to have, ask. Because right. chances are we do have it with seven buildings full of stuff. But the other thing I'll always tell them, too, is... Um. Uh, well, I just forgot where I was going. <laughs> That's how much I tell the marketing lines. They're almost. I, I got them so top of head they just roll off the tongue without even thinking about them. Um. Yeah. It's just. It's just a. Well, I guess it's just a commit to, commitment to uh, 
to doing things that make sense. It, all that, that's the, what I was going to say. Yeah. When you come in here for the first time, you don't know why things go together. You don't know why this singularly owned one-stop shop in Belleville, little old Belleville, Ohio, has this and that. But then you take a look around, and it just kind of all goes together. So we're selling to a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. That's that, And that's intentional, very yeah. extremely intentional. We're selling to a lifestyle. I'm not just selling to take care of animals. I'm selling to the people who choose to take care of animals. Yeah. Those are the people that also right. want some uh, some cool Ohio stickers and yeah. some uh, some yeah. some wooden block kids toys. Yeah. We have some some small games and whatnot. So when you come in here, you don't know why we sell some of the things we do, except when you look at it, it all makes sense. <laughs> yeah. You know, and and knowing your knowing your customer base. I, I mean, how many places can be closed? On Saturday afternoons mm-hmm. and all day Sunday, and you know after five or six during the week. Yeah, I mean all these other places got to stay open until nine or ten, and they're open all day Saturday, all day Sunday. But you know your customer base. You know your customer base that Sundays is typically a family day when it comes to farm life. Well, and and remember too, we are we are production uh, through finish. We, in a lot of ways, you know we're raising the non-GMO corn mm-hmm. that we're then selling. Through here, we are we're responsible for these things. Farming, <laughs> you kind of have to farm. Yeah, you yeah. have to farm. Yeah, you, you, and we're not getting younger too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I need some of these kids to get a little bit older so they can start doing this because I I'm getting tired. But but yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's that's what it takes. So that's why we commit to it. We're never going to be. I don't know. We we played with uh, hours ideas in the past. We're never going to be open on a Sunday. Yeah, that's I. Personally, I got to rest on a Sunday. I know all the guys mm-hmm. here do, right? And I wouldn't. I would expect that our customers would understand it because they're the exact same way, <laughs> right? They're yeah. busting their butts through the week, and then they're getting to the weekend trying to knock their projects out so that they can sit yeah. down on on Sunday and watch the Browns lose yeah. or and, watch your favorite movie again yeah. or whatever. And and at the same time, though, you have workarounds for that. Yeah. I've called on Saturdays. Yeah. Hey, I'm out of town. You know. Hey, Gary, it's Don. Hey, Don, what do you need? Give give you my card. Hey, just leave it on the, again. Just leave it on the dock for me. Leave my hundred and fifty dollars worth of feed and bedding on the dock, and I'll swing by Sunday and pick and, it up. And, and what it's do we there. say? And what yeah. do we say every time? Yeah, no yeah, problem. Sure, we'll do it. Yeah, yeah no okay. big deal. Here yeah. you go. Done. Mm-hmm. That's you know, why, that's, and that's why we we do deliveries. We do all the yeah. Right. That, everything is. And I sorry, I'm I stepped on you there a little bit. I that's how excited I get. Mm-hmm. That's 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 what we're doing. It almost. With how we've said, the reason our business model has won some awards, and we've been business of the year in the area a couple times, and we've re- actually the uh, the Ohio Attorney General uh, called us out in August as mm-hmm. uh, as being a spotlight Ohio business, right? I remember Be- seeing because that. of, and a lot of these business principles are unique only to this industry. They're not unique on the total. I mean, other. I, other places do things similar, extremely similar, but it almost doesn't matter that we're right. selling feed and dog food right. and bird seed and grass seed. It matters more how we do it. And that mm-hmm. we, as long as we remember that, as long as every small business owner in Richland County, Knox County, Ashton County, and, and all the other counties, if that drives your thinking and you remain able to switch on a dime should a decision need made that will that's your leading principle that's your right. guiding principle yeah right one thing i've been asking everybody before we wrap up these podcasts uh is if you could give advice to yourself and i think we're gonna go with 18 years old oh because uh yikes i always say when you're younger <laughs> and they'll and then everyone's like well how young so we'll go yeah. with 18 so okay if you could give yourself some advice for your 18 year old self what would it be oh jeez. yeah we, we were kind of talking about your uh holy cow your, your younger days before we started uh recording as well uh yeah this is a, this is a family podcast exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah what I what if I... your kids are old enough to know about your 18 year oh you know? i think they've been told some stories <laughs> <laughs> i um god that brings back a lot of great memories no I, what i would tell my 18 year old self in all honesty is you have to you have to screw up you have right. to 
not intentionally, but when you do, and you will, you have to learn from it. Therefore, based on the the success that we're having or starting to have or have been having, depending on your definitions, based on all that, I would say because of the satisfaction I get from where I now sit, I wouldn't change a daggone thing. It would have taken me working the Detroit Grand Prix on Belle Isle dodging you know, dodging dirty needles on the ground for IndyCar <laughs> during that, you know, to, to get here. It, it, it took, it would take, uh, I had Michael Jordan's personal motorcycle stored in my garage overnight one night because his team didn't trust the people at the, uh, <laughs> the people at the track over here. So, I mean, these are the great stories that brought me to where I am now. Right. So every mistake I made when I was 18, one, uh, <laughs> I only made one mistake ever <laughs> yep, from 18 exactly. till now. Now, all those the mistakes... Same they all lead to where I am now. Now, it's been my duty to follow through on those mistakes, learn from them, stress about them, um, right. wish them gone, wish them to have never happened. But now that I'm 46 and sitting where I am in Belleville, I recognize that it took exactly those mistakes that I've made yeah. to get to where I am now. Mm -hmm. Could I have gotten here otherwise? Sure, I could have. Absolutely, I could have. But I didn't. I did. I took the path with which I did. To get here, my my wife Jamie, my kids Maddie and Kale, my parents Butch and Tony, my sisters Olivia and Ashley, and, and their families, and it, we are here uh, because of those choices. We're just right. we're we're fortunate enough that we were open to learning from our own mistakes and not pig-headed enough to say no. I was right; the rest of the world was wrong. <laughs> right? You know, yeah, you yeah, know. yeah. And you know, to kind of help wrap things up a little bit as well, you know, having met I. Th I think the only people in your family I haven't met are two of your sisters. I've met Ashley. Yeah. Um, yep. But um, again, I mean, unbelievably welcoming yep. to, to anyone and everyone. I, I, I've i never had your dad not, you know, hey, trouble and, you know, make fun of me in some way. And, you know, everybody waves at him. He waves at everybody. I think it is, it you know, you you didn't get here by yourself, you know. Right. You you had a lot of help along the way. Jamie that, has been, I mean, I, oh I hear you. Goodness. I hear. I, I'm only you, here talking because I think I uh, I'm, the, I'm the guy that went to journalism school. That's why I'm here talking. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I, I would say otherwise. Anyone working here right now, from the kids that are in high school working mm -hmm. for us to uh, to Chuck to Jason to Gary, the manager, everybody, any of them could be up here talking to you right now, and I would feel comfortable in those in yeah. those situations. Mm -hmm. I just uh. I guess I remember the great movie Roadhouse when I say yes. it when it's time to be nice, you be nice. When it's time to uh, be not nice, then be not nice. But understand what you're doing. Just always yeah. be cognizant of what you're doing. Yeah. You know, that's, how, that's how all. did that not get any Oscars? I'm still Roadhouse. Yeah, uh, I mean seriously, because it, it was called the greatest movie of all time. Is That's there true. any kind of award you could give yeah. it to you, the you can't. Man? I mean, it, one, it, if it you're just, the greatest movie ever made, yeah, it's downhill from there. Yeah, exactly. Um, so <laughs> to close to close everything out, give everybody where you're at, where the business is located, and okay. how they can find you on the uh, on the uh, interwebs. I yes. think is how the kids call it nowadays. First of all, I, I would encourage anyone interested in seeing how we do things why we do things if you want to talk about things or just come down and see some of the some of the items we've been talking about that we do have come pay us a, a visit in person if you're able yeah it's just it's the best way to experience lz milling and trade for our particular business and, and what we do that's the best way to do it we do have um a website elzymill.com that's lzmill.com we try to keep that up to date we don't have a lot of specific products called out on it, and we don't sell anything on other than gift cards on on the internet um, intentionally. We have some reasons for that, but come down here to 25 East Ogle Street in Belleville, or give us a call at 419-886-3840. We have all the social media uh, outlets as well. We'll put some links down. Yeah, and and that that's a real good idea to get a feel for what we do, to get a feel for who we are. And to see how it is we could help you. We're not going to be able to help everybody. I don't know. There's mm -hmm. someone that's going to be listening to this, I'm sure, from downtown Cleveland that's going to say, what do I want to drive an hour to Belleville, Ohio, to pick up a candle for? Well, I, I don't why know. Why not? Don't. Yeah, why, yeah, you get why out and not? see the world. But if you don't want to, that's fine. But come down. Give us, give us, uh, give us some time. Uh, allow us to maybe show you the mill. Allow us to 
give you our spiels around the the mill. See the kind of fun that Jared, Don, you guys were talking about that we have when you guys come in and talk that mm-hmm. atmosphere in the morning. Come down, give it a shot. See yeah. see what it is. I, I think uh, I think we'll have someone for every something for every listener out there. Excellent. All right. Well, thanks again, Donnie. Thanks yeah, again, thanks, Jerry. Donnie. Thanks, guys. I appreciate this very much. I enjoyed it. I talk way too much. I should have warned you beforehand, but I didn't want to. Better to ask for well, forgiveness than permission, right? That is why they make editing tools. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good deal. Thanks, guys. Thank you.